Hello there, my beautiful friends. This is Angel Tia from Simply Angel Tia. Thank you so much for joining me today. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to do a wrist warmer. And this is a, a project that would be good to do at this time of the year because we're quickly approaching the cold season. I hope not for all of us watching because I'm sure there's some of you watching from a really nice warm climate. But uh, for those of us who live in a cold climate, uh, we're starting to get ready for that. And uh, so this is uh, one of the tutorials that's going to be um, to do something that is needed for this season. So the items that we're going to be needing are right here in front of the screen. So I will show you quickly the two things that are optional. There is a tape measure here. This is optional because for me, I did not use it. Uh, but if you do need it, especially if you want to uh, see how wide um, any section of your of your hand is of where the wrist warmer is gonna go so if you want your wrist warmer to go up to here then you will need to know or at least uh ta um see how wide the widest part of your hand is as well if you want to know how long it needs to go up your wrist then you need to also use a tape measure for me i just kind of winged it i did a chain and then i, I measured it from where i wanted to to go from here to where I want it to end here, and that's how I knew how many chains to do. The other optional object is um, uh, a darning needle. You don't need these uh, if you don't weave in your ends using these, uh, because there's other ways to do it. You can weave it using a crochet hook, or you could just tie it. Uh, this is also why it's optional for me. And to be 100% honest, I struggle so much putting the yarn in this space here and it will take me longer to do that than to actually crochet the project. So I don't like to use a uh, darning needle that much. So the main things that we're gonna need are right here. So a scissors to cut your yarn at the end. Of course, you will see that I have two crochet hooks here and I'll tell you why. So the main one I'll be using is this five uh, millimeter crochet hook to do most of the project, okay? But I'm also going to be using this 3.5 millimeter crochet hook at the end to do uh, the connecting. So like I said, I don't like to use a, a darning needle to weave in. Um, and in this case, I will not be sewing the, the two part, the, 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 um, the uh, wrist warmer together using a darning needle either. I'll be using a crochet hook and this is why this is going to be handy. And of course, we cannot forget the yarn. Uh, this is a gold color, uh, impeccable, 100% acrylic, and I will put all the information you need in the description box of this video. Now, before we actually get started, I have already completed doing one of the uh, wrist warmers. As you can see, this is the one I'm going to be showing you guys how to do the second one, okay? So this is for my tiny little wrist. As you can see, it's really small compared to the one uh, my boyfriend is modeling in the video or in the pictures, I should say. Um, and I also wanted mine to go longer or further down my wrist because I wanted to cover most of my arm as opposed to this one that I did for my boyfriend that is, as you can see, a bit on the wide side, so it's wider. First of all, maybe I should put them together so you can see the difference. <laughs> Uh, so as you can see, um, his is a little bit wider and shorter. Um, and also when it comes to where his thumb comes through, uh, he did not want this uh, little thing that I did around here to kind of um, indicate where the thumb is going to go. Anyways, long story short, anyways, I'm going to be showing you how to do the second one. There is no difference between this and this in, in, uh, 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 beside the size. This one, I just did less chains for the foundation chain. I did 31. I did 41 in this, so just 10 chains more. And I believe I did, um, I don't remember exactly how many rows I did of this, but there are at least five to six rows more than I did this. So, okay, there you go. That's all the information you need for now. And so we'll get started. By the way, I hope you guys are all doing good wherever you're watching this video from. And thank you again for joining me. If you're new, don't forget to subscribe. I, it's crazy when I look at my uh, YouTube subscription. Uh, it's actually, <laughs> I have a very small percentage of people who are watching my videos who are subscribers. I believe it's something like 91 are non-subscribers and the rest are the other 9% are people who have subscribed. So don't forget to subscribe, you guys. It's always good to see um, what I'm posting, what is coming up next. That way you don't have to go searching for things to do. 
anyway so let's get started so we're going to start with our slip knot okay so again i'm just going to show you guys how to do a slip knot i've done it in almost all of my videos but if you're new and you don't want to go back to my videos to see how i do it in this video so um, this is how i do my slip knot slip knot so i have my yarn like this and this is a way for me to secure it and then i take my middle finger i lay this over i pinch it with my thumb i take the tail of the yarn i loop it around my thumb like that and if you look on this side it's an x i hold that down i slip it off my thumb i take my crochet hook i put it in that little circle that we made i yarn over i bring the hook and the yarn through the hole then i release okay that's how i do my slip knot you don't have to do it like this so if you have learned how to do it some other way go ahead and do your slip knot i'm just showing those who may not know how to do a slip knot and they want to learn you can do it like this as well or other ways that you find easier okay so like i said i'm going to do a chain of 41 for this so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay guys so this is a chain of 41 here okay so we'll put it down that's how it looks like and then we're going to ch turn so just by the way a quick tip if you're doing this uh, project we do an odd number so I did 41 because we're not going to be working into the first chain here from the hook so you have that one extra one so that you don't actually have an odd number uh, when you work so it's actually a chain of 41 uh, 40 plus one that we're not gonna end up using okay so for this first row we're going to do a single crochet from the second stitch from the hook okay so just like that all right and then you're going to do another single crochet in the second in the next um, stitch and then a single crochet in the next stitch okay so as you can see here what we're going to do for this first row is we do a single crochet all the way to the end of this chain so go ahead and do that and i'll see you guys at the end okay so we will go ahead and move on to the second row and to do our second row we're going to start by doing a chain one okay turn your work so that the back uh, side of the last row is facing you and now that you have that you're going to do single crochets going into the back loop only but you're going to start with the very very first one here so as you can see as soon as you did a chain one there's this very first one here just right beside the chain one you're going to go through the back loop and do your single crochets and you're going to do that for the next uh, 16 oh, there you go for the next 16 uh, stitches you're going to do single crochet going into the back loop only okay sorry about that there you go so you will do that one two After our 16 rows, we're going to start with a puff stitch in this very, very stitch next to it right here, okay? And a puff stitch goes like this. You, you go through the space, you bring it back, you have two loops on the hook, you yarn over, you go through the same space, you bring it back, you have two, four loops on the hook, you yarn over, you go through the space again, same space, you bring it back, and now you have six loops on the hook okay and now that you have your six loops on the hook you're going to yarn and go through all six like that that's a puff stitch and then you're going to do a chain one and then you're going to skip this next one here this next uh, space next to this puff stitch and in the next one you're going to do another puff stitch there so you're going to go like you're doing a single crochet yarn over go through the same space yarn over go through the same space you have six loops on the hook yarn over th pull through all six loops do a chain one okay so as you can see those are your puff stitches right there beside each other 
So you're going to do the puff stitches all the way to the end. If you counted your work properly, you should end up with a single crochet at the end, okay? So go ahead and do that and I'll meet you guys at the end. Okay guys, so um, this is where I'm at. I just wanted to show you what I meant by if you counted your work properly, you should have a single crochet at the end. So as you can see here, I have three stitches to go. I have this hole, this hole, and at the end, okay? So because we're skipping a stitch and then doing a puff stitch, I'm skipping this one doing a puff stitch here, just like that. Okay. And now that I have my puff stitch and I do a chain one, I have this little hanging tail here. And this is where I'm going to do my uh, single crochet going through both loops like this. Okay, and so not the back loop only like we did the other ones. You go through both and then you do your single crochet there. All right, so we have just completed our second row. And you can see this is what we have so far. And then, so we're going to do a chain one and turn. Okay, we're going to do another row of the puff stitch here. And with this very first stitch, we're going to do a single crochet. Okay, and then we're going to start with doing a puff stitch right here. So I'll just quickly show you that. So this is where the puff stitch is. If you pull it apart at the end, there's this gap here, not the middle. Don't go into this space here. You go into this gap on the side of the first puff stitch here. So you're going to go right into that. Okay, and you do your puff stitch. Okay, just like that, chain one. And then you're going to skip this stitch here and in the next one, so as you can see, there's this stitch, we skip that. In this next one, you go through the space and do your next puff stitch right there. And then you skip this stitch into this one, which is this space here. You do your next puff stitch. Okay, so what you're going to do is go ahead and do that until you get here. This is gonna be where you put your last puff stitch, right here. And then I'll meet you there, okay? so. I am now at the end of the last uh, puff stitch in the second row here, okay, in the third row I should say, um, actually first row, sorry. Now like I said we're going to then continue from here to do our single crochets going into the back loop only, just kind of how we did when we're bringing this row back inwards like this, okay. So continue to do your single crochets using the back loop only until you get to the end okay so now that you have one stitch left at the end what we're going to do is instead of going through the back loop for this final stitch we're going to go through both loops like that and do your single crochet okay so this for me creates a solid end and not work that has you know that is hanging and I'll show you quickly what I mean by that by the way if I was to just go through the back loop like this, I find that it looks like this. It has a, like it just, I, I don't like it. If you prefer to do it like that, of course do it like that, but I prefer to go through both for that final stitch before I turn my work, okay? So that is the second row of your work and it looks like that, okay? And then you're going to chain one. You're going to turn your work around and then you're going to start by doing your 16 single crochets using the back loop. Okay, so these are back loop single crochets only. Okay, and the reason I say 16 is because there should be 16 stitches here. Okay, and the rest of it is all where we do the puff stitch. Okay, so with this particular one, with this particular row, we're going to create about four rows of uh, the single crochet but this one is going to be going across the project the four rows are going to be going across the project and I'll show you quickly what I mean by that I 
and if you're not sure if you have if you're maintaining your number of uh, stitches you can always just count I just kind of have faith in myself that I have I'm maintaining the, the number of stitches so I don't count every time but if you want to assure myself then I just usually count but anyways so now that we've done our 16 single crochets using the back loop when we get to where we did the a puff stitch we're going to go right into doing a single crochet using the back loop because if you can see here there's spaces where you can do the back loop continuously across the top of these puff stitches okay so I'm just gonna continue going across that and just doing my single crochets in the back loop like that then I'm going to chain one turn my work and then start my second row of single crochets in the back loop okay so I would like you guys to go ahead and do that so this is our first row we're just starting starting our second row now you will do four total of those and it's going to create something like that so this is four rows in the middle here of single crochet in the back loop and then we do our two sets of puff stitch and then we do another four rows of that and you continue to do that until you get the number of rows that you want okay welcome back my friends so this is the uh, amount of rows that i needed for this uh, risk warmer for me so as you can see i'm done okay so we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step again i did 22 rows which is the same as i did on this one again it's very thin uh, if you're doing yours and you had more rows it will be a little bit wider than than this but uh, i'm doing it for my size so obviously you will do it for your size okay so now this is when i switch to my 3.5 millimeter crochet hook so moving on to the next step of this project we are going to do two rows right here of the uh, single crochet okay and this is just to create like a nice if you look at what i did here uh, I did actually I just did one row so we'll do one row I thought it was two so we'll do one row just so it creates like a nice and even finish like this as opposed to if I leave it like this this is the edging that you will have as a finish obviously it's not the best right anyways so we're going to chain one oopsie as soon as you chain one you turn your work like this and you go straight into this very first space here oops this very first space right here and you do your single crochet there and then you move on to the next space and you do your single crochet there so keep keep in mind when you're working with the edge like this there's no definite space to do your stitch you just have to find a, a nice gap that you can kind of put your hook through and do your single crochet there as long as you're not it's not too tight in one spot and too loose in on the in the next spot okay so this is what we're gonna do here just to create like a nice edging border you may call at the end of our uh, wrist warmer here now that you have finished doing your edging there it's time to join our work and what you're going to do here is you're going to continue to use the same crochet hook that we have just used now you're going to fold your work like this now again there's no right or other size with this they're exactly identical on both sides so you just kind of choose whatever side you want to be the outside and what side you want to be the inside so in this case here i'm going to Fold it like this make sure you line up your stitches really really well that way it's not kind of crooked when you do this and after so I leave my uh, loop here like this and I go into the very 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 edge stitch here and it's usually a little bit harder to go there you go okay and I'll just go in like that with my work lined up very nicely like that and then I'll bring this through this space like this okay now that i have that i'm going to bring this in oops now that i have that there i'm going to go right into the very next space here and i'm going to line it up with the other side so that it's matching bring it through and do a slip stitch okay 
and the reason I wanted to use this smaller crochet hook size to do this is because these spaces are tight here and if you do use a bigger crochet hook it's going to make it really really hard for you to complete this and it's gonna pull the yarn and it's just gonna be a little bit of a headache to do this and you don't want to deal with that like you want to be able to just kind of slide the hook in there bring it through and do your um, and do your slip stitch like that okay so as you can see that's the closing it off there okay now to determine where to bring it down because this is what we're doing we're doing this section here and we will eventually stop to create this spot for your thumb to go okay so what i did just quickly as a guide because i did not count the stitches i just looked at it and i said okay so how many of this puff stitch do i go down before i change it and then i do the loop here so in my case one two three four at the fourth is where i stop and I start to do the um the, the 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 creation of the hole for my thumb now this is because i also have little hands like tiny hands if you have bigger hands you may want to have the hole lower so just kind of play with it and measure how that's gonna go that's the only way you can do is just to to make sure you do it for your size and and kind of measure that so with me doing this it's unfortunately for my size so i cannot tell you how to do for yours except you just have to count down so and this is the side that i'm using to count so one two three four so i have a few more to get up to here and then i will go ahead and show you what to do there next but just like that and then like that okay so let's switch again and see i'm almost there one two three four so we're there already okay now that we're here what i did again to create this uh, size of the hole here it's up to you but i used one two three four actually more like three of these puff stitches for the size of the hole that i am going to do so it's going to be from here to around here and what i do here is while i'm holding my yarn like this i'm going to go just on this one side i'm going to go into that stitch bring the yarn over to this side and do a slip stitch and then in every in the next couple of stitches i do slip stitches again in my case i'm going to do about three puff spaces so we started right here one two three so i'm just a little bit past the third point but it's okay because that is exactly what i want here okay there you go so now that i have it straight like that i'm going to go actually you know we're gonna go into the one previously there you go here now that we're here i'm going to go into here and then line my crochet hook to the other side right there bring the yarn through and do my slip stitch there now this is where i create this area for the thumb as you can see there's a little bit of a nice edging there and i will just go ahead and move to the other side so as you can see i was working on this side okay i move it to this other side and then i do my single crochets from this side so let's just go back to this way first so after i do that i go to this side bring it through and then I turn my work to this side. Then I open the little gap that we had created there. Okay, there, oops, there. And I'm going to go in here and you just find a stitch space. You bring that around to this side, you do your slip stitch. Then you continue to do it on this one side of this of the hole. And you do slip stitches around it. okay so i have gone through the space here twice just to create this nice looking uh space here for your thumb 
and now that I have that I'm just going to again make sure your work is always lined up very nice and pretty okay like that and when it's nice and lined up if you're very very picky you can count the number of stitches and then make sure you're lining it up like that but it just take too much time so I don't usually do that so what I, would, I just do is I make sure my work is very very straight and lined up and then you go ahead and continue to carry on with your uh, slip stitches going down your work here okay so um, at the end I did my very last uh, single crochet at the end here okay and now that I'm there we're going to chain one I'm going to chain one and then we're going to do what we did on this side which is another row of single crochet around this space here oops not slip stitch but a single crochet like that and again this is just to create a nice um, a nice edging for our work you could leave it like that if you want but I prefer to just kind of make sure everything is nice and neat so make sure you take the extra minute because this doesn't take too long just to go around take that extra minute and you will see your work quality improves quite a lot we cut these off here and then we're going to fasten it here just like that and what I'll do here since this is the inside of it I'm just going to pull this yarn to this side because look at the other one the other one is on this side as well I'm just going to bring it over if I can there you go just like that and what I do is I just tie it like this tight one more just to make sure it's secure like that and then you cut off the excess yarn as close as you can not too close because you don't want it to unravel and that's it okay so let's look at what we have done here okay so stretch your work there you go especially this side here because this side is where you do the uh, the single crochet joining okay so this is the one that I did before so these are for myself okay there you go and if you can put it on let me try to put it on now so you can see how it looks like and it's very nice and tight so as you can see very nice and tight and I like it like that because I feel like I get more warmth when it's this tight as opposed to when I do it loose okay so there you go these are my wrist warmers it's done I hope you guys enjoyed making this with me thank you so 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 much for following this tutorial and like I said at the beginning um, subscribe to the channel so you can see other things that I'm coming up with in the future um like the, the the video if you like it comment if you have any questions or any just want to say something nice um and as well share the video with your friends so that you guys can have fun making this um project together okay thank you so much again for your loyalty for your subscription and i will definitely see you guys in my next video and i hope you guys have a good one okay thank you so much ciao ciao